Hi, I'm Andy and welcome to my channel about crypto. In this video, I will show you how to use Uniswap. Uniswap is a decentralized exchange and you can buy on it tokens, which are sometimes not available on other exchanges. Usually it takes quite a while before tokens are listed on big centralized exchanges, such as Coinbase or Binance. Before that happens, you can still purchase them, but you have to use decentralized exchanges, such as Uniswap. Another reason to use it is to avoid certain restrictions. For example, Binance allows you to purchase different coins if you are based in the United States and different ones if you are based in other countries, which will be true also for many other countries and many different tokens. For the purpose of this video, I will show you how to purchase Superfarm token. So first of all, you go to CoinGecko and you find the token you, you are interested in. When you scroll down, you can see what exchanges it's currently listed on. And actually this one is available on Binance, but like I said, for certain users, it may not be possible to purchase it there. So I'll use Uniswap. You can also see here what's the trading volume on various exchanges. Sometimes tokens may be listed on an exchange, but the trading volume is so low that it may be difficult to process trades, especially bigger ones. For example, in this case, if you look at this exchange here, 24 hour volume for this particular token has been only $10,000. So it may be really difficult to purchase a few thousand dollars worth of this particular token. So first thing you need to do is to copy the contract address. This is to ensure that you actually buy a correct token. You can just look for the token on the list on, on Uniswap or any other exchange you will use. Uh, but there may be some fake tokens there. By copying the contract address from, the, from CoinGecko, you are certain that you're purchasing correct token. So I'll just simply click here to copy. And then I go to uniswap.org. Make sure that you're definitely using correct website and it's secured. I will click here to launch up. And I'm presented with this interface. To be able to process any transactions, I have to connect it to a wallet. In my case, I will connect to MetaMask, but as you can see, there are other wallets available. And of course, I have to enter my password to authorize it. Once I authorize my MetaMask, you can now see that my public address is here, or well, part of my public address. And you can see the amount of Ether available. In this case, I'm looking for Superfarm token. If it's a token you you purchased before, it will be listed um, here. However, I will paste the, the address. And as you can see, Superfarm token will appear here. Click on it. You can see that I already have some Super tokens in this wallet and I just want to buy some more. So now I specify how much Ether I want to use. Okay, so let's say I want to buy 0 0.2, oops, 0.2 uh, Ether worth of super tokens. I could just swap it here, but actually, as you can see here, I get a notification that I can get a better uh, price on version two of Uniswap. This is Uniswap version three. And depending on which tokens you are buying, sometimes you may find that actually better prices are uh, available on different platforms. So I'll click on it to go to version two. As you can see, pretty much nothing has changed, but, but now I have slightly better price. I then click swap. And now I have all the information here about the swap. So the amount I'm exchanging from Ether, super this liquidity provider fee here basically does the fee you pay to to the liquidity providers because it's a decentralized exchange i'm exchanging ether directly to super sometimes for example if i wanted to exchange stable coins such as tether it would go tether to ether to super because you cannot directly exchange tether to super farm um, so it's important because for each step you will have to pay gas fees in this case, I know that gas fee will only be charged once, but if you have multiple steps, you will only see gas fees for the first step of the transaction. 
Um, so it's a bit difficult to predict how much it will cost you in total. But whenever possible, you should try to avoid having multiple steps. Sometimes you cannot avoid it, uh, but if you can, well, that's, that's ideal. And here also we have slippage tolerance. It's really important. At the moment it's set to half percent, which is fine. And basically this value is your tolerance for the change in price while the transaction is being performed. In case of extremely volatile tokens, which have very, very low market caps, or when the market is extremely active, for example, when an influencer posted a video about a particular token, the price is likely to skyrocket afterwards if it's a low market cap token because everyone is jumping um, into buying it. And you may find that your transactions will fail because the price changes too much between the moment you accept, you confirm the swap and the swap actually being performed. So in such situations, you may need to change this number to something like two or 3% or even more. But you have to be aware that the higher the slippage tolerance, the more you're losing in between when the transaction is being processed. So you have to be very careful. Because I haven't accepted the swap yet, because I was explaining all the details here, the price actually has been updated. So I have to accept it now or not. And now I will click confirm swap. This takes me back to MetaMask. And as you can see here, actually the amount I want to purchase plus the gas fee is more than what I currently have in Ether in my, in my MetaMask. I was hoping that this would happen uh, because I can show you what, what to do in this situation. You could adjust your gas price, uh, but then you risk your transaction taking essentially forever to, to be processed or being rejected. First thing I will do is I'll check what are current gas prices. So I will go to gasnow.org. There are a few diff different websites you can use. Um, I personally prefer this one. And as you can see, gas price at the moment, depending on the speed of the transaction is somewhere between 40 and 60 gray. What I will do now is I will reopen my MetaMask. And I actually don't want to process it. Well, I cannot process this transaction, so I will reject it. This means I will just make sure that there's definitely no transactions hanging in my MetaMask. Nope, that's fine. So what I will do now is actually I will exchange 0 0.19 worth of Ether. Swap. Confirm. We are taken to the same MetaMask window. And now as you can see, I can actually process my transaction because there is enough Ether in my wallet to, to pay for gas fee. Um, I can adjust gas here if I click edit. You can see here that I can choose between slow, average and fast, uh, which of course refers to the, the transaction processing speed. And at the moment, the difference in price is minimal is between 20 and $25. When the market is really busy, this can easily go into hundreds of dollars. So you have to be aware of that, especially if you're planning to purchase small amounts of tokens uh, that actually your gas fees can can be a significant percentage of your of your whole purchase. You can also go to the advanced tab and you, here you can input gas price manually. So yeah, the prices are still between 40 and 60 gray. I'll go back to Uniswap, back to MetaMask. Okay, and I'll put manually 50 gray I think that should be fast enough to process it. Here is my total transaction cost. I hit confirm and the transaction was submitted. I can see now that it's pending and actually it's, it's been processed already. So if I go back to assets, so as you can see here, um, I have now less ether in my wallet because it was used for the transaction. But if I scroll down, I can see that I have no more super tokens. I can close this window. If you don't have particular token already in, in your MetaMask, 
you would need to click here to add super, well, in this case, add super to MetaMask to ensure that it's actually listed there. Otherwise, it may not appear. Of course, your tokens are still in your wallet. You just have to um, make sure that you add that token so, so it's visible. But because I already had some super tokens in my wallet, um, I don't need to do it. I just click close and that's it. That's, that's how you use Uniswap. That's how you adjust your gas fees uh, to purchase tokens, which you may not be able to purchase otherwise. The last thing, which is extremely important, is that, of course, you have to then disconnect your MetaMask or just simply go to your MetaMask itself. Click on this icon here and click lock. And now if I refresh Uniswap interface, you can see that again, no balance is shown and the wallet is disconnected. So, so just in case if someone could access my computer, they, they cannot perform any transactions because, because my wallet is locked. So although it's all pretty straightforward, once, once you are familiar with the interface, when you do it for the first time, it can be a bit confusing. If you don't know how to use MetaMask or how to uh, install MetaMask and how to transfer funds uh, from a centralized exchange into MetaMask, so you have some ether for other transactions, uh, check out one of my previous videos. There is a link in the um, description. I explained there how to, how to install MetaMask and how to purchase and transfer ether from Coinbase to, to your wallet. I hope you find this video useful. If you have any comments, any thoughts, please do let me know. If you find this content helpful, please hit like and subscribe buttons and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.